Welcome to the October 23rd meeting of the Berlin Council on Aging. We are in a Zoom mode. Uh, if anyone uh, is, and it's not because of COVID, it's just because we're shy. And if anyone uh, wishes to participate, um, you can raise your hand there someplace. Where is that? If anyone has questions. Actually, we've never had anybody call in, have we? Sometimes. It's rare, really? but it happens. Yep. You've been hiding them on us? I've never seen anybody. Well, last meeting we had two, we had two ladies in the audience. Oh, that's, of course, of course, that's true. That is true. All right. Um, first item on the agenda is reviewing and approving minutes of the previous meeting. Does anyone have any questions, corrections, et cetera? Or are you finding them extensive minutes, nicely kept? Uh, any issue with them? Hearing none, I would accept a motion to accept. I mean, I would entertain a motion to accept the minutes as submitted. I'd like to make a motion to submit, to accept the minutes as submitted for the Do last. A second. Do I I'll hear a second? second? Thank you. Okay, all in favor, Rachel? Aye. Lori? Aye. Bob Blair, aye. Karen? Aye. And Kate's not on yet, right? She's in the dead zone. Okay. All right. So they are approved. Is Pat not here either? She's in Flor okay. Florida. Florida. Kate just tried to call in, but her call dropped immediately. Oh, okay. So I just told her just to, um, you know, if she needs to delay getting in, just to let us know. All right. Um, so the minutes are accepted. Uh, can we have a report on the fiscal situation? Yep. Karen, you ready? I'm ready. All right. Uh, Part-time wages, $535.50. Director wages, $2,645. Donations, $116. And expenses are $375.02. And what are they for? Mostly uh, Tai Chi and yoga reimbursement for Meals on Wheels. And most of the income we have is people making going some... To classes. Yeah. Okay. Tai Chi and yoga is going... Okay? The donations are what? 116. Yeah, but what were they for, Bob asked? Uh, tai Chi yoga donations. Oh, oh okay. No. Um, 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 um. I just had a pithy thought about the financials. Never mind. I don't remember what they were. Oh, I, it wasn't even about that. It was about Tai Chi and yoga. How is the attendance of those now? Both have been solid. Um, as a whole, I would say sale. Ha we've been doing sales at 10 o'clock on Saturdays as opposed to just having just regular yoga and chair yoga. And sale seems to be a hit. Um, we, are, we seem to be having more people staying for both classes as opposed to before where people would only kind of come in for one or the other. And what's a sale? Sale is a uh, strength and in, uh, it's basically a strength and conditioning class. So the thought is, is that it helps you strengthen your muscles. So you have a reduced risk of fall prevention and, um, you know, impact mobility. So helps to keep you limber. Hmm. Good. Is anyone doing it via Zoom? Yes. So both classes, we do have people who do Zoom. Normally what winds up happening is that for um, the yoga classes, the people who are doing it by Zoom, it seems like that they're staying on to do sale as well by Zoom. So that's the good news. Before it seemed that we had like people just join in for one of the yogas. But it seems like now that we, we're having, it seems like more people stay on for both. Hmm. And as a whole, people are liking it. I haven't heard any... Um, I haven't heard any issues. So, um, cause Sharon will do a modified yoga. So if people need to be doing yoga poses on a chair, she will guide them to do it that way versus if they can't stand up and do all the stretches. 
Are they both in our space or yes. are they one at the 1870? No, nope. both in both in our space. Goody. Okay. Uh, any questions on that? Oh, uh, blood pressure clinics. They should be resuming as of. Uh, they should be resuming as of November. I'm. It may be delayed, but because uh, October is flu clinics for Neshoba Boards of Health, they scrap it. I believe starting in November, we should be resuming blood pressure clinics. Are there any issues with Neshoba Associated Boards of Health having staffing problems? Staffing for them, I think, continu continues to be a challenge, but we do have an assigned nurse. So I'm hopeful that we will be able to continue to have clinics. Is it the same nurse every time? Because Tamara Bedard Usually, used to be for a long time. Yeah. Long. Tamara's pretty stretched thin. So there's a there's a new there's a newer nurse that comes in and helps out. I think Tamara tends to do more gap coverage if it's needed. Huh. Anybody have questions on any of those either of those? Who's that? Some voice. And, and, uh, and I don't know. Ain't my house. Not my house. TV's on. Maybe I should turn the TV off. <laughs> the other oh. I said. Victoria, uh, what, is, what does sale stand for again? What is it? It's. Hold on. I built it's stay active in something else. Hold on just a second. I just want to make sure I get you the right. Um, it's stay active in independent for life. Huh. Okay. I did not know that. Okay. Hmm. Sounds interesting. Well, that's kind of the whole thing about Tai Chi, isn't it? The balance and the motion and so forth to prevent falls and yep. maintain motion. Yep. Yoga and Tai Chi do a bit balance between breathing and exercise. Um, and they do a lot of mindfulness practice. Sail doesn't necessarily do as much with the mindfulness, but it's still a positive and helps keep people, um, keeps people going. Do we do, yeah, we, I, we list it. We list both activities in the Powderhouse Newses each time. Mm -hmm. Is there any other, does it make sense to try recruiting at all um, through Berlin Neighbors Connect or Berlin Citizens United or whatever it is, the second Facebook site? Um, I have no access to Berlin Citizens United, but I mean, we can certainly continue to do blurbs on Berlin Neighbors Connect. I have yeah. that. Attendance continues to remain pretty solid, um, but I, like I said, I, we have I have no objections if we want to just do a new posting. It's been a little while. Yeah, I think that'd be good. Okay. What are the numbers now? So attendance? for Tai Chi, between like in person and Zoom, we're usually at about like six to eight, um, and then for yoga slash sale, we're usually into double digits. Okay. Like ten to twelve, or. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, How both, much? What would be yeah. the max that either one could handle? I would say maybe twenty. In each of them. Yeah. So there is room for recruiting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are you so you'll put something up on Berlin Neighbors Connect? Yep. All righty. Uh, van updates, our beloved van. Yep. So uh, I have some good news. We have hired a per diem driver. Um, he is in the process of getting blessed by all the other powers that be, and he should be able to start um, November 1st. Yay. So that would make the van operating how many days a week? He he is available for up to three days a week. Um, my other driver is guaranteed for Thursdays. And so I think what we probably could do is as long as we have the calls coming in, we probably could do service two to three days a week. What would we need to get five days a week? Just calls coming in that people have. A no, no, no. I mean, in terms of drivers. Um, well, we still have a driver out on workers comp. So how long is that likely to last? I have no idea. Yeesh. 
and that was work related. Huh. Huh. Okay. Um, is that anything we're able to know about, or is, is there some sort of confidentiality thing that says why he he or she is on comp? I can't discuss it. I have been advised not to until they come back. Hmm. Uh, I hate seeing the van just sitting there and being it capable is being and not used. For October, we have been able to do two days of rides a week, so we're still offering rides. It's People have been very good. They've been able to reschedule their rides so we can accommodate the best we can for the days we have drivers. What, what tends to happen is, is that once we know that van is up to a more fuller capacity, it just takes a few more weeks for people to start rebooking appointments for the days that we didn't have available. What so area does our van service cover? How far out? Worcester? So for medical appointments, we go out towards Worcester. We'll go towards Framingham. We'll go towards Emerson and Concord. We'll yeah. go towards um, Littleton. And then we can go towards Lemonster. So we have a decent wow. Yeah. So when you, when you, if you take a ride request to Lemonster or Emerson, that mm -hmm. ties it up for a, a pretty long stretch, does it not? Yes. That's why we always tell people to give us as much notice as humanly possible. Um, we've had a handful of days where we've had like four or five requests and people are going in two and three different directions. And we've had to tell them, I'm sorry, we had to go with whoever requested the van first. Um, but if we have multiple riders requesting a ride in the same area, we will take them if we can. I'm interested in this from the standpoint of uh, public transportation in Berlin, because mm -hmm. as you may know, I got appointed the town's rep to the Worcester Regional Transit Authority, uh, and we have no public transportation except for the COA van. Um, and I really am looking for somebody to come up with some reasons why we should be, what we should be requesting more of, uh, another van, uh, a van provided by the WRTA with their drivers or so on and so forth. So I, I'm not sure quite what the vehicle is to, so to speak, to um, solicit this input, but uh, I really would like to hear from all the town departments and groups like COA uh, about what kinds of public transportation Berlin would like. I mean, you think way back, the town had two trains. I'm not expecting them to start train service anytime soon, but it would seem, I, I go to Market Basket fairly often, and I keep seeing these other buses, small buses from various uh, providers in the area coming in with uh, loads of people. So I don't know why we wouldn't be able to uh, set up some similar sort of service or hook it in with somebody else's so that we're part of that, <laughs> their route. In terms of, I mean, Berlin and Hudson do do rides to Highland Commons weekly. That does happen. In terms of the WMRTA, unfortunately, because Berlin's out of its transit area, I don't know if we would get approval from the WRTA to go there. Um, they, they do tend to get very selective in that you got to stay within their catchment area. There are some towns that do have contracts, uh, like a multi-municipal uh, uh, like collaboration, but that right. gets very detailed. And, um, you know, we'd have to figure out payment. Like if, say, for example, we worked with Boylston for something, you know, does Berlin pay Boylston directly? Does Boylston bill Berlin? Like there's a lot of semantics that go into that. Not saying it can't be done. It just, it's not something that can just be done. Um, you know, barring an emergency, it's not something that can be done, you know, pretty easily, like all the powers that be have to bless it. Some towns, what they do is some towns have contracts with Uber, Lyft or taxi services. So if for any reason they can't accommodate rides for people or if they get multiple requests at the same time, they do have an onstanding contract with another service and that, they're, uh, that their network is able to use that instead. Again, it goes through a similar process, but it, it does make rides, I think, a little bit more tangible. 
sometimes too also charge for rides. Um, and what they'll do is they'll say, okay, fine. If you're getting a ride within three miles, it's $3. If your rides within, you know, 10 miles, it's $5 and they go out that way as well. Um, it's just what the other councils on aging in the areas have done. I'm not saying we have to do any of them. It just, it's what they do. I am hundred percent with you that transportation in this town is a massive problem. And the thing that I worry about is while I would love an additional van, I doubt if the WRTA is going to give us funding for either a loan of their van or funding for a driver, it's still going to put the onus back on us to find another driver. And finding drivers is an extreme challenge. All the COAs are having the problem. It's not just us. So if this okay. WRTA had a driver to spare and they were able to drive the van, I'd be thrilled. I think if we get another van and I still only have one driver for a day, I, it doesn't matter that I have two vans. I still can't yeah. drive two vehicles. Yeah. I know somebody from uh, Northbrook too was asking me, is there an Uber service in Berlin? And I couldn't answer the question immediately. I don't know if anybody is an Uber driver or Lyft or any of the, that type of service. If they're not in Berlin specifically, I'm sure between Hudson, Marlboro, Northboro, that there probably are local drivers. The thing is, though, is that, you know, the person basically is going to have to take it at their own risk. Um, like we don't, we're not going to know how much money that's going to cost. They have to do the payment ahead of time by credit card, um, things of that nature as well. So, you know, we've had people in the past take Ubers and Lyfts to go places and they've been okay. There's not as many cab services available as there used to be. Worcester and Lemonster have a couple, but they're really not in as much service as they used to be. Um, so yeah. Worcester I know has, for some time, for some years, actually had a deal where anybody um, can phone into the WRTA and request a ride. The van right. comes, picks them yes. up. And if they so, exceed the vehicles that they have, they can actually tie in taxi services in town and they do the same, pick people up. Marlboro, like like Worcester Marlboro, also has like a dial a ride where for the state lets you obviously dial for a ride. It's like $3 one way and it will bring you to like the train station and things like that too. Unfortunately, if WRTA is like, that is a service that would be at the regional level. So if WRTA is not going to provide that, hey, we're kind of out of luck there. Hmm. I remember Margaret said that in her, one of her previous positions that the towns in her area in what I think it was Western Mass did have cooperative arrangements where, where people with their services across each other's borders in a collaborative way. Like I said, it's not some, it's something that I can talk to Kristen about. It's not something that I, I doubt it would happen, you know, right now, it may be something we could look at for like the next fiscal year, possibly it just, the, the contracts get very litigious. So I would just have to make sure, you know, like obviously another council on aging or another, um, you know, human services department would have to sign on with us. And then we'd have to figure out, okay, you know, you know, if you take a Berlin resident to here, here's what we're going to cover and vice versa, you know, then if we get on the hook, you know, unfortunately, because we don't have the depth of staff as other towns do, I would hate for us to sign on to one of these contracts. We have a driver who either goes out or calls out sick. And then now we're stuck with rides, not only for Berlin, but now for another town as well. And that, mm. and like I said, that's not fair either. Um, so, you well, know, we need to, we need to find some solution to it. I, I, I do drive for uh, Shoba neighbors and, and, as to the services they offer, the one that is most frequently requested is rides. And in our case, the rides are virtually limitless. I mean, we don't go to Topeka, Kansas, but I did take somebody to Nashua for a, a prosthetic uh, device adjustment one time. And, you know, they can be pretty far flung, not, again, not Topeka, Kansas, but in the area within reason and definitely asking for rides is, is the biggest ask at this point. So that's, I'll, I need to put on my uh, WRTA hat and get to work on this because that's, it's a problem that needs solving PDQ. Yeah. I think, um, you know, I think having Berlin represented with the WRTA is good because I, I think that you're going to be really strong and, you know, talking about, you know, listen, like we are a border town. Unfortunately, we border two other regional transit authorities. And it's hard because I think this is another instance where Berlin kind of got forgotten about 
where it's like, okay, yeah, you're not this one and you're not this one. So, um, you know, like I said, I, I think that there is a way for hopefully for us to get expanded service. Like it, um, like we've talked about before, even if, you know, we knew that people were going to be able to go to Worcester one or two days a week, you know, with help from WRTA, like, you know, that's still stuff that we can then, you know, shift those people over to that system and then prioritize rides elsewhere, you know, that would not be in that coverage area. Yep. Anyone else have other input, questions, advice on this subject? Here comes Kate. Okay, Kate, we just made you the chair of our transportation committee. I didn't hear, uh, ooh, I'm so happy. <laughs> I don't think she heard you. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously she didn't, so she would have gone <laughs> offline. <laughs> What have you? What are you saying, Bob? <laughs> we just made you the chair of our transportation committee. Uh, <laughs> that's hilarious. See, see she didn't say Dr. yes. Transportation with no cell reception. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Um, if there is no further discussion on that one, um, COA member vote. We had two people offering yeah. to fill the open position. So about that, I got an uh, I got a notification today from Linda Tomasino. She is asking to no longer be considered for the spot. She's got too much. She's got something going on personally, and she's not able to give her time to the COA in the way in which she wants to. So she's asking for her name to be withdrawn. Oh, I'm bummed. She's awesome. She's and I told her that, you know, I told her to just reach out if there's anything that we can do to help her out in that, you know, if another uh, position comes available down the road or if she wants to get involved at a later time to just let me know and we'll immediately you know work with her on that. So I wanted to let you guys know that one before. We do still have Linda Sinclair. She has still given her intent. Um, just to give you guys a little refresher, she is one of the newer residents of Berlin. She's been here for about, I think, about a year and a half. Um, she is a uh, retired physical therapist, and she's been doing some work with, um, I believe she's been doing some work kind of more like on the coordination side of care with one of the, um, with one of the healthcare agencies closer towards Boston. And, um, so I and will when, leave it. At and when when she applied, did she indicate any specific? I don't remember from the last meeting. Did she indicate any specific vision she has, or any interest she has in helping the COA or adding to what the COA offers? Well, from her background, it sounds like 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 all of us, like she wants to help to try to keep seniors safe in their homes and help to keep them, you know, active in all facets of life. Um, mm -hmm. I think, you know, if you, if the council decides to have her come aboard, I think what we could do too is kind of do some more work with her as well, just to figure out if there is any other specific topics or areas that she would like to work on specifically with the seniors. Um, her, I mean, her knowledge, you know, in the physical therapy world, uh, Karen and Rachel can attest to it, it's going to be huge because, you know, it's something that, again, when we're planning stuff, we can, you know, keep that in mind, um, you know, again, accessibility and uh, ease of use for the myriad of residents we have. Okay. Is this... Um... Is she she's the only applicant for this at the at this stage? Yes. So you guys can decide. You can vote to have her be accepted. If you guys chose not to, we would just be reopening it back up again. Um, if you guys voted that you wanted her to join the council, that recommendation goes to Kristen and the select board for them to finalize the recommendation. And the opinion of the COA board of directors. One and all, what is your what are your opinions? Well, I don't see Rachel, any reason. Lori. Why <laughs> all right, I'm all for inviting her to join us. Voting her in. Yeah. Okay. Right. Second. Oh <laughs> no. Sorry. I, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't. Right. No. 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 Sounds good to me. <laughs> Rachel? I agree. I think should be a good fit. Okay, so uh, let's take a vote then. Uh, all those in favor of inviting her to be the, an additional to fill the vacant seat on the board, um, say aye. Karen? 
Aye. Rachel? Aye. Lori? Aye. Kate? Aye. Bob? Aye. So it is unanimous. Perfect. I will make sure Kristen is aware of that so she can add that to this next select board agenda so they can uh, cement her membership. Okay, great. It's nice to have the position filled. Have you heard any more from Wes, by the way? I know you sent something to his family. He was as not right doing now, well. Yeah, as of right now, um, stable from what I've, from the little bit that I heard, nothing, it, just, I guess it's stable at this point. I haven't heard too much one way or the other. So, um, yeah. Hmm. But you sent him, I think you sent him a card just I recently. Did. To the family, yep. Great, appreciate I that. I told them just to reach out if they need anything and that we're, we're thinking of them, so. Nice, yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. I'll check with his son also when I see him. Um, let's see. Upcoming events. So we, um, we have a grab and go, do we not? We have. So tomorrow is the grab and go. Um, Chef du jour will be coming here probably around three ish. And then we're starting deliveries around four ish. Um, we have only about, I think, four or five deliveries that are outside of Pleasant Street. So um, wow. we can get that one. And then um, a lot of people are picking up, which is fine. Like, I don't care. Um, and then, like I said, Pleasant Street's most of the deliveries, which makes life easier. Um, we have organized a mini COVID clinic for the Northbrook properties tomorrow um, at, I'm sorry, at 10 o'clock. It goes from 10 to 1. Um, so I will be down at Northbrook helping out with that. Um, so In the community building or in Northbrook too? Northbrook 2's first floor community building. So for those of you who have never been in Northbrook 2, um, as soon as you go through the double doors, there's a uh, there's a place on the left and then that's a little community room. So we figured easy peasy, um, easy peasy. Do you have way. a lock, lock picker going to be at the door or is someone going to get the door open for us? I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to see if I can get somebody to help me let me in. Yeah, that's good. Good, Victoria. good. Excuse me. Victoria, is it too late to sign up for the grab and go? What would you like? <laughs> what was it? Scrod and chicken, uh, roast chicken. Uh, how about one of each? Okay, got you. Thank you. This is why I how ordered. Many, meals. How many we total? Have so have many left over. So we ordered. So we got a request for sixty-eight meals, just knowing that we were going to get a couple stragglers, and I ordered seventy-four. So with Chris, we're now at seventy. How does that compare to the last two? Uh, we're about the same as the last one. Um, it's a weird time of year, but I, I think what we can do too is, um, it's a good amount, but I would say it's a little low, but not, not too much. So from the last one, um, something that I wanted to discuss with you guys as well is just to see, um, you know, post tomorrow, we don't have anything scheduled for the rest of the year. I am going to be doing shine and working on the digital literacy stuff, but if you guys want to think about either having a grab and go again, like either post holidays or um, another event or something like that for the new year, just let me know and I can check availability. Okay. I was glad to see the uh, mention. I don't know if you put it in or Laurie put it in about the uh, sand buckets that people want them refilled and so forth. Yeah, we didn't get any takers for it last year, but I figured no, at this I point, like, let's just see what people say. And, uh, you know, we can take it from there. Um, you know, Fred, Fred last year told me that, you know, if we had people requested, he said, you know, go down and take the, take the sand. So, um, yeah. and again, if we get, um, if we get a lot of takers for the buckets, I mean, we can certainly reach out to Lowe's and get the partnership. So they're getting funny though, because they, I, I guess, whatever shrinkage of income. I don't know what the deal is, but somebody uh, asked them for a donation of something recently and they said they're not doing it anymore, at least for the time being, because of, I have no problem going to see the manager and asking him if he'd repeat if we're low on buckets. So last time, we did, as you say, we didn't have any takers. Initially, yeah. we had, I think, 50 buckets. I would say if we get takers, we can... Um, like we, like we did last year, let's see if people call in requesting a bucket. Worst case scenario, like if it's only a handful of buckets, we can even, um, you know, I can even purchase them and then 
uh, have the formula, like have it be used for like formula grant money or something like that. Um, the cost of that really, because the buckets are not even five bucks a pop. So it, that's not the end of the, that's not a big deal. Well, let's see how it goes. I have no problem asking them anyway. They were uh, good enough to give us 50 to let, uh, two years ago. So, and as far as filling them, uh, if you make a list, I can pop around and bring a truckload of sand to dump it on their lawn and they can throw it in the buckets or maybe be more helpful than that. Maybe I could actually just take the buckets and put more sand in them. Yeah. Let's see if we get any takers. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. Um, can we just go back to the grab and go? Um, yep. I'm assuming you need help tomorrow. Right. If anybody can help, that would be great. Um, yeah. I think I've told everybody who's picking up. So Chris, this includes you just to come starting around four 30. Um, just mm -hmm. to give us enough time to start getting the preparing done. Um, I think it's good. It, when we've done the two meals, we did the two meals last time. It was extremely efficient. We were able to get everything done within an hour. Um, so I'm hoping the same thing will be done tomorrow. Um, so yeah, if anybody has time, just let me know. And, you know, I'll certainly use the help. Um, but so 3 p.m. is the start time for, or you want people there later? Like quarter of. Quarter, quarter of three? Of three? Quarter of four. Four. Okay. Four. Yeah. I just yeah, don't bother coming yeah. earlier. Just because what we can do is um Amy, um, Amy and her mom are gonna do the deliveries for Northbrook. So they um we usually get them prepared first so they can go get their uh meals out and then we do everybody else who's gonna be delivered and then we focus on the pickups. Great. Okay. I'll be there until five thirty, so you know, last year was, I feel like we were done at five though. So yeah. I don't know if you're all done already. I'll, I'll text you tomorrow. We'll figure it out. Yep. Yeah, I'll help. Sounds good. Thank um, you. COVID clinic. Yep. That need was the any, Need anybody to jab people with a needle? No, we've got, we've got a nursing agency doing that. So. Oh, okay. It's probably a bit, safer. A little bit. Yeah. Yes. I have fairly good aim, but you know, might hit the wrong I thing. Qualify. Fun. What's that? I don't think you're qualified. No. Well, I'm good at giving people the needle, but not necessarily in the medical sense. <laughs> Let's see. What have we got? Digital literacy classes. Yep. So as you guys know, we got the grant um, from the state for Executive Office of Elder Affairs to do the digital literacy classes. Um I have been meeting, we have a senior in town who was recently retired. He has agreed to teach the classes for the digital literacy grant. I met with him yesterday. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'll show you guys, um, we were talking about uh, what we would like to do in terms of um, uh, basically what we're gonna offer for people and things like that. So I'm just gonna show you guys really quick what we're gonna do, or at least what we're thinking of doing. Um, if you guys have any feedback, let me know. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where we're at. So where would it be conducted? So we're going to split it. Um, so when we wrote the proposal, we had to basically designate where we thought the classes were going to be. So we're splitting yeah. between the library, town offices, and Northbrook's community room. Um, because um, Northbrook, um, which? One or two? Two, probably. Hold on just a second, guys. Why is it got He's getting big, Lori. I know. Oh, <laughs> who's that tall right. guy stranger near you there? We just had, yeah, yeah wow. next week. All right. So Thanks. here's where we're at. Um, so what we did was we were using the community needs assessment survey that we did earlier in the year to help us along with what the state wants to see with these classes. So basically, uh, not only are we trying to do like the hands-on sessions for people to understand the technology, but we're also trying to figure out how it's going to help people enhance their day-to-day -day lives, make life easier, um, and looking at basically the well-being of, per of a person, you know, beyond just the physical. Um so we're doing it like, so we're talking about having kind of it look in a couple of different ways. So just like overall, the general training of, you know, the devices, the technology, things of that nature, and is looking at also helping people stay healthy, active and independent in Berlin 
and um, you know, finding resources that people may need as well so they can become more self-sufficient. Um, so just overall, I don't, if you guys want, I can just kind of go through this. I don't have to like go through each point by point, but I just figure like, again, like we're trying to, like the general objectives are just helping people try to get more affordable, um, internet if, if at all possible, helping people get, uh, the ability to safely use web online services, helping people to, um, you know, be able to use, um, you know, documents and word processing if needed and helping people, you know, basically just getting general basic skills for um, technology, whether it's by computer, tablet, phone, whatever. Um, I think it's, I think it's funny that the prop used for this digital training session is, is a bucket of pencils. <laughs> well, you know, we're going to be, we're going to mix the old with the new school. There you go. Um, so for the staying healthy and active, it's social media. We're looking at social media. Um, we're looking at telehealth applications for healthcare, mental health care, as well as any additional portals that people may need to use for um, doctor's appointments, things of that nature. We're also thinking too about like, okay, um, you know, say for example, people want to pay bills online. How do you safely do that? You know, people haven't figured out um you know, shopping online, things of that nature. I think just people knowing generally what services are going to be available to them technologically in Berlin, and then how do you use it? Um, we are looking to do a training, um, just generally speaking of how do you use the town website and a lot of the other town um, entities. So that can include That's Zoom, good. YouTube, it can, my town government, where all of the agendas and minutes for meetings are posted. Um, there is the town also now has Unipay to pay um, taxes or pay, um, you know, like dog licenses, things like that. So people want to learn how to do that as well. Um, and then we're also looking, you know, again, for just some self-care stuff for people. So if they want to learn how to use like music, games, things of that nature too, like be a nice, like complimentary knowledge set. And then especially um, for resources, we want people to be able to kind of understand like where they can find things. You know, Google is great, but you got to take it at face value and that you can't always trust everything that you read online. We want people to make sure that they feel comfortable being able to go online and that they're going on to safe and secure websites that aren't going to hack them. And uh, Victoria from the library has told me that she is very interested in teaching people how to use library resources as well. This includes Libby, mm. the databases, things of that nature as well. So she's going to be teaching a class on that side of it because it's above my head. So um, so this is kind of what we're just thinking of, generally speaking, for classes as we're looking at Internet basics. What is the Internet? How do you use it? We're thinking of having a class, like a class or classes on like different devices. So using like a smart TV versus a cell phone versus a laptop versus a tablet, what are the pros and cons of each? You know, having internet help you with healthcare and activities of daily living. There's a lot of smarter technologies out there that people can use to help them with reminders of things. Or for example, like there's like the Robobax and things of that nature as well. Using internet to stay connected to not only to Berlin itself, but to people, you know, far and wide, um, the library resources and the technology and safety. Um, what we're working on too is, um, the state for the grant wants us to be able to measure success. Like what does success look like? So we're also trying to figure out, um, basically like a pre and post survey that people would complete just to say like, here's something that I wanted to learn and I didn't know before, but now I feel somewhat comfortable trying it. Um, yeah. so that's going to be part of it as well. And then, uh, um, in addition to these uh, classes, we're also going to be doing one-on-one -on -one sessions with seniors. So the caveat is going to be is that we want you to take a class first, but if the class, you know, you still don't have an understanding of something, or if the class didn't cover something that you're still interested in, we can then have seniors sign up for a one-on-one -on -one, because I don't want everybody to sign up for the one-on-ones and then we get no one coming to the classes because that defeats the purpose. Um, so like I said, we're, we're thinking of six different classes as of right now, but um, having them operate two to three different times, because the thought is, is that, you know, we want to kind of keep the classes smaller, you know, um, maybe 20 people max. We are thinking too of allowing a caregiver or like a secondary helper to come in with a senior as well, if people feel more comfortable having it that way. So that way, you know, if somebody wants to take notes for them, or if somebody who's going to be assisting the senior at home learning these technologies wants to be there so they know what we're talking about, gives a good frame of reference too. Um, but yes, we have 
we have a very lovely uh, we have a very lovely participant who wants to help us reach out to the seniors of town. Um, as of right now, I'm still just waiting for confirmation that we've received the state funding. So once I get it, we're going to be purchasing the tablets and the mobile hotspots that we requested, and then um, then we can start doing publicity for the classes. So my hope is that we can start classes in the new year. That Great. is my. Do the participants have a hard copy takeaway after the classes so that in case they didn't remember some aspect yeah. of the training, they can. Good point. Oh, yeah. I think what maybe what we can do is maybe like a one-off sheet, just like a simple page, like a one pager of like, here's general topics that we discussed, you know, and then again, if people wanted to take additional notes that they can. I don't want to give too much information because I also feel like too many words is going to like make people freak out if they're looking, if they're referencing it later. But, you know, if we do like a one pager of just like, okay, here's a couple um, images and then here's what this means. I think that that would work. Okay. I mean, I, for myself as a learner or try to be a learner, um, sometimes people will give me all of the procedures and places to go and things to do. And it's cool at the time. And then few days later, I'm trying to uh, replicate what I've been taught. And then I'm going, oh, geez, what was the second thing I was supposed to do? Right. And if I had it to look at, it becomes, you know, the more times you do it, especially if you have a gouge right there to look at, the more the it plan becomes is ingrained. To, yeah. The plan is to, is to have an information part of the class, but then also a, you're going to try it in class as well. So you're going to be yeah. able to replicate it as well. So, you know, if you hit a hiccup versus, you know, for a particular thing, you know, you can make your own notes about it and be like, oh, next time I'm going to do X. And like I said, we'll have a one-off sheet. We'll have people there to hopefully be able to help the seniors. And why we're also to allowing like a caregiver or a support to be there as well. You know, again, to like, you know, if I'm your support and I'm like, oh, hey, Bob, you forgot to do this next time. It's something that, again, we can help you make sure we get. Yeah, I'll have my caregiver come with me, that's for sure. Um, I'm just thinking about the, uh, the follow-up. I mean, maybe um, one of the tests of their absorption of the information is to ask them to go online and submit their impression of the course and what they've learned and so forth. So they actually use the technology to respond. We can certainly try that. Um, I think the only majority of the residents of Berlin have access to Wi-Fi and with the mobile hotspots that will help to bridge a gap temporarily. I, I think what we can do is um, what we're going to have to figure out is we're only getting five hotspots because we don't want them just sitting idly. So um, what we'll have to do is part of the class is we'll teach people how to use like a mobile hotspot if they don't already have solid internet <clears throat> access already. And this may also be a beta test for them to just talk about, hey, you know, if you don't, if you don't already have internet access, here's what it can be beneficial for. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, we, what we can do is we can certainly, we're creating the pre and post surveys. We can do an online and a paper version of both. And then, you know, what we can do is we can challenge people and say, look, even if you submit a paper copy post survey, we would like for you to just try to do it online as well. Just so, again, like you said, you can test your skills and. Yeah. There. Sounds terrific. Sounds like something definitely needed. Absolutely. And um, Speaking so. Speaking personally. <laughs> and that's the thing is like, you know, we don't, we don't expect everybody to, you know, be sitting here like doing TikToks, but we would like people to just generally feel more connected because they think part of the disconnect Berliners have is that, you know, we do have a lot of info out there, but I don't think everybody knows where to get it and how to get it. Um, right. and unfortunately in the health and mental health world, again, as Karen and Rachel can attest, things change quickly. And, you know, I, we may have resources up there, but I, you know, there's, there's times where things will change quickly or there may be wait lists for things that we don't know about. And, you know, we want people to have access to as many tools as they can, and then they can make the decisions from there um, as to what they will and will not use. Anybody else I have questions? Yeah. I think understanding how to access medical records electronically or using like a lot of hospitals now have platforms that you sign into to check your yeah. medical um, labs, do appointments, things like that. So I think that 
that would be helpful. Absolutely. It's part of it. And I mean, the reality is, is that whether people like it or not, Medicare and mass health are shifting online. It's a matter of time. They're already starting to phase it in. Um, you know, people are basically being like, we were told at shine training two weeks ago that if people sign up for social security and Medicare online, their transactions, you know, tend to be going a little bit more smoothly. Same thing with mass health. They're eventually going to be shifting to everything online only. So I don't want people <clears throat> then miss out on potentially getting these resources because they don't know how to use the technology. Yeah. I think it's great. Yeah, me too. They'll realize they they get a whole day back from when they would sit on (laughs) old. Or, you know, like, even if you can't do everything online, even the fact, like, even if you get like, you know, 30% of your stuff back now, because you're able to do that online or, you know, it just like that, that quality time. Um, you know, it's not going to fix everything, but, and like I said, I understand why people get very fearful about going online. You know, there's a lot of very scary things out there in cybersecurity. So, you know, we will also too want to make sure that people are aware. Okay. Like if you think that you're having an issue or you think that you've been a victim of cyber crime, here's where, you know, you come to Berlin police, here's what you do to follow up with it as well, because we don't want people being so scared that they're just frozen. We want people to also feel like they are empowered that in case something were to happen, that they do have recourse. Any other questions on that subject? Okay, Uh, let's move on to Powderhouse News, which is just wrapped up in Lori's capable hands. If, If you reviewed it and passed it along, Victoria? Yep, it, is with, it is with Clinton offset. Um, I am just waiting for them to let me know it's ready. Uh, just a heads up to you all. So the post office changed their procedures for these bulk billings that the town does. So Kristen was mm-hmm. able to create a town of Berlin account. So I think I figured out how to do it correctly, where we now have to plug in all the information online ahead of time. And I now get a printout that I have to hand in with the papers now. Um, so I think I did it right. We're going to make, I will be there when the papers are ready and we'll hand it into the post office, but I can no longer just, they want everything basically digitally run through online before you go to the post office now. So they basically can scan a barcode and be like, yep, this is your order done. So I think I figured it out. Since they've become so much more efficient, does that mean our uh, postage cost has gone down? (laughs) If I did it, what I think is correct, it went down $10. But that may, overall, but again, right. overall, yeah, but let's so. see. So I, that's why I'm saying like, this is the beta test. Cause if I did it right, then we're going to know for the next issue and going forward, it's going to be much easier. But I did call the post office. They did their best to assist me, but this, they also had a lot of hangups with this as well. So I had to do my best. So this is going to be a beta test for us all. I have, um, one question about it. Um, somebody in Northbrook too said that I asked her if she had gotten the powderhouse newses, and she said uh, sometimes she doesn't. They're left in a bunch in the first floor lobby, mm. and I said that's not how it ought to be. Every all the seniors should have a mailing label, and you should get it in your mail. Is so that not true? For, yeah. So with Clinton Offset, what we do is that um, with whatever most recent list I have for the census, I the Clinton Offset uses that list, and then they they basically will print on each individual powder house, like who it goes to. In terms of the delivering part of that, I have no clue. Um, but like, I yeah. haven't been bringing extras to them or anything like that. So I'm. That's interesting. Like, I don't know why they yeah. have. I mean, it has a mailing stuff. label. It ought to go like any of the rest of their mail. Yeah, in their, their mail mailboxes. Slot. Right. That I don't. That's know. weird. That's weird. Okay, that's not only weird. It's a little annoying. Um, Lori gave me a whole list of uh, interesting topics we cover with the uh, who, what, where, when, and why, the five W's, and um, working on some of those. Um, the uh, Bergen sisters are actually one of the Bergen sisters put together a good story for this one about uh, their parents. Uh, and so that's an article that's going to be running, but... Um, if anybody has some suggestions about people, either seniors who have passed or ought to be noted in a, in a write-up, um, pass that along. 
And um, I'm, Bob, if you would like to, for the next powder house, if you want yeah. a blurb, like asking seniors to talk about transportation issues, you know, beyond what the COA is like from our earlier conversation, I think that that would be, especially for it's, it's a new year of paper. I think that that would actually be really timely. So we can. Okay. Oh, hopefully before I do that, I will get some input from others in town as well. I, it I'd, like the, to go, I'd like to go to a WRTA meeting or have a one-on-one -on -one with the, uh, with the head honcho and uh, talk about what I really think we need and they ought to be working with us and getting. Well, if you want to try to hit the masses, it may be the, it may be the easiest way to get it. Cause I, I have no problem putting together something and sending out to departments, boards, committees. I, I have no problem with that. I'm just thinking for everybody else. Okay. I mean, so if I want to hit them. Yeah. So if there's something that you would like me to send out to boards, committees, department heads, let me know. And I, I will go yeah. and send it out. All right. Um, so the November, December issue, as we said, is out. Yep. Well, hopefully out soon. Out soon. So it should get in people's hands before the beginning of November, which is the first of the two months of the issue. Um, any topics in people's minds for the January, February 24 edition? Um, Something you'd like to see uncovered, discussed, exposed? We don't dish on anybody. We have strict niceness rules in what we print. No ideas? If you guys wanted to, like if we wanted to kind of take a little bit of a different turn, we could, I was thinking about like, because the next issue will be January, February, you know, we could talk about like, if you really wanted to, like, you know, like the longer lasting marriages of Berlin and like how the people meet, you know, we could do like a, something like that too, just a, as like a little, like, besides like the history maker per se, we could talk about like history couples and then, you know, talk about like, oh, you know, like Bob and Sue have been married so many years and, you know. Or like Lori and Dennis. I think that's a great me. idea. I do too. Something a little different. Just something yeah. a little different. Yeah, it is. And it's like really positive and happy. Because because that's what we need right now is just, you know, not negative. So well, certainly in like the doldrums of winter, a little yeah. love story is cute. I think it's a great idea. So Santa we can. Um, Mrs. Santa, you know, all of those good stories. They're from Berlin? They are if you want them to be. <laughs> You can give them any mailing address you like. All right. Has anybody got any? Oh, that's FYIs. What are your FYIs, Victoria? Um, something just wanted to ask you guys about. Um, last year we had, I talked to you guys about that Join Pro um, agency. They do virtual programming uh, for, you know, seniors where you can basically go on like an interactive tour of like various places around the world. Um, think about, like I said, after tomorrow, we're going to have a lull for a while of various programming that we're going to offer. So if there's something that you guys wanted to, um, look into for either, and I know what the holidays, it's going to be a challenge, but like, you know, even come January, um, as Kate said, like the winter blues are real. So if there's stuff that we wanted to plan out for things to kind of know that they can look forward to come the new year, you know, just let me know. And That's where would the entertainment be available? Is it on Berlin Cable or? So the Join Pro is a, it's like, um, it's like when we had that MFA presentation, I believe it's a Zoom link. And yeah. what we can do is we can then just send whoever would like to go the link and then they just click it and then they're there. So it's almost like a travel log. Mm -hmm. We should ask AJ and Ann. They just came back from Norway, coastal cruise. Um. Well, that sounds interesting. Anything that people can get without having to shovel their way to it is Andy. How does the uh, COA get credit for it if, if, in people's minds if that's something that we promote? So what we can do is um, I can get you guys, um, I can just, co I can contact the agency, see if their prices have changed, see what would be available, like hypothetically for January, and then see how much notice ahead of time that they're going to need. We can figure out what our options are going to be. We can decide at next meeting. And then, you know, for the January, February powder house, we can post, look, heads up, 
call us if you want this and we will get you all the details so you can join in and that we want people to be able to do this. Um, cause I, I think Kate's right. I, it's hard planning stuff for winter time. Um, especially cause we never know what winter's going to be here, but I, I think if we just have like, you know, one or two things a month during January, February that people really can look forward to, it's going to help make the humdrums of winter go by a little smoother. Yeah, Great. I think we're New Englanders too. We're used to sometimes snow pushing the date a little bit or whatever. Yeah, it's best to plan it, and then maybe it doesn't work out, but it's something. I don't know. Yeah, in my opinion. Good point. Ah, uh, let's see. Other business. That's all I had. Do you guys have any business? Yes, Lori. Um, hospital beds. Ah. I've heard recently that there are two available in town. Um, I don't know the first person, but the second person uh, brought it up to me. And she, I put a little note about it in the Powderhouse News that someone in town has one. And to get in contact me, with me, and I'll put them in contact with her if they need one. But, you know, these things are very expensive. And people do ask for them, and we never have them because we've got no place to store them. Can we figure out a place to store a bed or two just in case? So I am really leery about the COA accepting beds. Like, like the smaller durable medical equipment is one thing. The beds make me really anxious because it's a lot of pieces that could potentially malfunction. And Unfortunately, you're right. It is an expensive piece of equipment. I've noticed now a lot more of the like skilled nursing facilities, hospitals, like almost proactively ordering this stuff for people before they go home. So sometimes like I've gotten the same calls to Lori of like, oh, hey, I need a bed. Do you know of anything? We figure it out. Then it's either like, I don't know how to get it to them or no, never mind. Like my hospice agency ordered it or like my nurse ordered it. I don't need to worry about it. Um, I just, there's, there's, I think there's too many moving parts with the bed that could go wrong. I get really, really leery and they take up so much room and guys, you know, the space we have, we, we physically here have no room for it. Um, and I don't, I don't see that changing in the, in the distant future, like in the near future. So, um, I I'm perfectly fine with keeping people like connected. Like if somebody does have a, you know, being like, Hey, here you go. Susie has this bed, contact Susie. That's totally fine, um, but I don't know if there's a better solution to that one. Well, you can certainly, if 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 we become a conduit for it, we can say we make no representation of condition or quality or any of that. That's for you to decide yourself, and we are, you get it as is. And I think that sort of disclaimer, I don't know if that legally keeps us from being uh, harassed but we do have a waiver form for the durable medical equipment but it really is not meant for this bigger it's more meant for the smaller pieces of equipment that are more mobile that can be loaned and given back i mean like i said it the bed makes me really anxious trying to think of like how are we gonna deal with it dispose of it we had a bed here when i started guys and I, that thing was here for well over a year before somebody finally took it but I, I mean, I had to basically like tell the guy, like, I have no idea if this even thing even works, let alone, you yeah, know. Yeah, but I mean, I think that's that seems doable. I, I, my horror recollection is that we went through that before. Somebody from um, co housing was offering one. We picked it up. Um, nobody, I called around all the COAs. No, no, nobody needs it. Nobody has a place to put it. So I took it over to the transfer station. I laid it down beside the metal hopper and I said, just hang on to it for a week. Let me check one more time. I went back a few days later and somebody had clipped the two electric motors off of it. Thank you very much. And the rest of it went into the metal hopper. And 10 days later, somebody's on the phone. I really need a hospital bed. Can you, I mean, a you know portable hospital bed. Can you help me find one? I said, well, I could have. The medical equipment really ebbs and flows. It just, it's just the nature of it. And like I said, like, you know, Karen deals with this daily too. It, unfortunately, like we can't, 
I don't mind us having a small stash of, you know, more of the smaller equipment for people to have, but it's like, we're not a pharmacy. And I, I just, I get really anxious about, like, I, I have no problem with us being a conduit saying like, Hey, contact this person. If you need this, like we've heard that somebody has this, but it just, it's going to, it could be, it could get really ugly quickly if we start really getting into, because especially like these bigger pieces of equipment, like none of us are trained and are authorized to know, is this a perfectly functioning working piece of equipment? We're not authorized techs. Like there's too much that I think really could go wrong, which is why every other COA around does not take durable medical equipment because no one wants to deal with the liability of it. And like I said, I'm with you guys. Like if you want a small stash of stuff, fine. I, but like, I am really not comfortable taking on anything that's motorized. Where they're so expensive, do people usually exchange money or how do you even? And that, well, and that's, value um, what's... Too, I mean, some, some agencies, what they'll do is that they'll let you rent it. Um, you know, and like I said, Karen can speak to this probably a little bit better than I can. Some companies will let you rent it. If say, for example, somebody's like on hospice or palliative care, their care teams will work with their own suppliers to get that in, to get that equipment in. And then once the person passes on, then they basically all that stuff gets returned. Yeah. Um, and I'm the thing- familiar with it when insurance is involved and stuff. But I mean, do we have people in town who maybe are? So insurance doesn't pay for it. It's, it's really hard to get a hospital bed covered by insurance unless you're on hospice. Okay. Or or very very ill with respiratory issues. Otherwise, we people have to rent them or buy them. It's usually they rent them. It's usually on a rental basis for yeah. that reason. Nobody keeps them. Right. So it is a rental. It, and it honestly too, like depending on like a person's medical conditions, as Karen said, like if somebody has like severe illness, a doctor may be able to justify it, or an insurance company may be willing to help cover some of the cost of a rental. Just like you know, because again, they'd rather pay for that versus like the upfront costs of a six thousand dollar motorized bed. Yeah, well, so there's semi electric as, as well as full electric, and there's all different variations. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mm. So I think I, let's see. I, I would side with Victoria, and I would say that I I honestly wouldn't put the town at risk of, of taking those beds and and giving them out to anybody. Too too many things could go wrong. Yeah, you, you don't want anybody getting hurt. And, yeah, I mean, I think it's I think it's a great idea. To, you know, like Laura said, to have it available if someone needed it because they are very expensive. But if, but the flip side is, who is going to be responsible if something yeah. happens? Is there any way there's a forum like on Facebook so people can just announce if they have something they want to get well, rid Berlin of? And... Yeah, yeah, I've seen that on Berlin. Well, there's yeah. yeah. the Berlin Boylston, what's the one that you don't pay for anything? People buy just, nothing. The buy yeah. nothing, yeah. Mm. Mm. And if people do put sizable items on there. I've seen like kitchen cabinets. Yes, they do. <laughs> Well, stuff that you wouldn't think would be on there. So it wouldn't surprise me if a hospital bed ends up on there or something. They're it's, also on Craigslist. Craigslist. Yeah. 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 So there's other ways to, yeah. I like what, I like what you did, Lori, about just saying, hey, look, like we've heard that this is available. Contact us if you are in need of it. And I think that that also gives people the opportunity just in case like there is somebody out there who does need a hospital bed that we haven't heard about directly. And then, like you said, at least in that way, we can say, okay, yep, contact Susie at this number. Here you go. I think yeah. that that's, I, that I'm totally fine with um, because, and like you said, like then they're taking care of it on their own. Um, yeah. Do we need to check with legal about what our waiver looks like, if it would actually cover us? If, I mean, if I can talk to Chris. Do it, does that put us in a funny spot even there? Well, the thing is that if we basically are telling people, here's a name and number, then the person is making their own choice at that point because we're we're not signing off on any condition of the of whatever yeah. it is. You with do it in writing equipment. or no? I mean, um, with the smaller equipment that we have here, yes, at the COA, yes, we have a waiver that we have people sign when they borrow stuff and when they when they donate equipment, we have them sign it. So that mm -hmm. covers us that way. If we're just telling somebody like, hey, Kate, Karen's got a hospital bed. If you want to contact her directly, she can give you some more information. If that's all we're telling somebody, then we should be okay because we're just giving them that information. We're not telling them that like, you know, Karen's got the Maserati of hospital beds. 
and we're not we're not ensuring that the bed is in you know perfect order or not. Yeah. Well, so that means I mean that seems. But then like you a also don't right have a record of what you said, just in case somebody comes back and oh no 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 she assured me this was good you know. But but, but we wouldn't be though. That's the thing. We wouldn't so be telling seems, them. Right, but I'm like just saying if it's in a phone call, you don't have like anything written to back your side of it. And this is probably going way deeper than it needs to go. <laughs> I mean, I can certainly I can certainly double check with Kristen and what her preferences are with this. When I, I remember one with Margaret, she basically told me like, you can let people know about, you know, that something is available, but you cannot discuss any, you know, you cannot discuss like what the quality of is it, okay, what condition and anything like that. Okay. You can just let them know that it is there. And then the person has the right to make a choice from there. If, if this were to become, I think, a more pressing issue, you know, I can ask Kristen what she would want us to do. Does she still want us to have somebody sign a waiver form, even though it's not something that technically is being housed here at the town offices, yeah. um, you know, just again, to kind of cover us that way. Yeah. Well, um, maybe it's infrequently enough that it could just be a case by case thing. And yeah, I think, I think it's an appropriate role for the COA to be able to forward that information yeah. If it comes in that somebody has one, you're not making any yep. representation about its quality or condition. Mm -hmm. And so that we as board members, for instance, if we notice something as Laurie did, somebody having one that they're trying to pass along, we could give that to Victoria and somebody phones in the COA looking for one, they can at least get that information. That isn't saying we're saying mm -hmm. anything about it, just that here's somebody who has one check it out yeah. it's on you to determine if it's uh, safe not safe works doesn't work and that's what i've done in the past too whenever we've had kind of those kind of calls um you know I, i've basically done the same thing i've asked the person who's got the particular item i said do i have your consent if somebody were to ask me can i give out your phone number or can i give out your name or email yeah. to a particular yeah. person if they are interested and then when the person comes in calling asking for more information i can say you need to contact so and so directly here's their contact information Mm -hmm. And then I just tell him, I'm like, I, I, and I flat out tell him, I'm like, we cannot ensure anything. I said, I have not seen this item. I can't give you any specifics on it. I have just been told that this has been made available. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I like us being in a spot of helping and absolutely yep. not always having just, our hands tied because of liability. <laughs> I want to, I want to, oh, yeah, I want to help where we can too, but I'm also, I am never going to set up this council to fail. And the other way we could be set up to fail. Okay, any more on that subject? Uh, any other business? Next meeting date is Tuesday, November 28th at 4 p.m. Everybody mark your calendars. It's after Thanksgiving, so yes, we'll have oh, turkey stories. We'll all be um, turkey feathers coming out our ears. Uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Motion second. Motion. All right, moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor, Karen Schultz? Aye. Rachel Boyer? Aye. Lori Fairbay? Aye. Kate Bliss? Aye. Bob Blair, aye. Unanimously decided to adjourn. Thank you all for coming and for your excellent input and ideas. And, uh, see some of you tomorrow as we dish out food and that's in the coa space correct and the correct yep yep all righty thank you all